And I'm talking to men and women. Who are you? Boaz knew he was a catch. And if you understand who you are, then the presentation ought to be such a way that anything that's less than, they ought to know. Don't come up in here with no foolishness. Folk ought to realize that you ought to step to me the right way because the presentation is an indication of the package. You come to me, your breath smells like you hadn't washed it in three days. You go out on a date, I expect you to pay. You didn't even save, you're looking at me to pay. You ask me out. Um, can we talk and be real tonight? The presentation says a whole bunch about the package. But, but the sad thing is, what you accept says a lot about who you are. And, and, and let me share a secret with you. If people know that they have to step you the right way, you will weed a lot of foolishness out. When bozos and the folk that you need to run away from, bros, when they know that the package has to be presented the right way, it will weed a lot of people out because a lot of bozos don't want to go through the time to prepare. Shawty, what's up? Let me just holler at you. What's going on? Shawty? Come on, let me get at you. The presentation says a lot about the package. Number six, you have to agree on the right things. Number six, you have to agree on the right things. Chapter three, look at verse number four. When he lies down, note the place where he's lying. Then go and cover his feet and lie down and he'll tell you what to do. Drop down to verse seven. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly and uncovered his feet, and she laid down. Ruth needed grain. She needed food. That's why she was gleaning. She needed grain. She was working not only for herself, but she's working for her family, for her and Naomi. So one of the things that is a, of significant value to Ruth is stability. This is why she's gleaning. This is why she's doing what she's doing. Because her and her mother-in-law need stability. And notice her mother-in-law keeps saying to her, she says, notice where he lies down. N notice where Boaz lies down. That, that phraseology, it, it, it literally means... Notice where he places emphasis. Notice what's of value to him. And the Bible says that he lies down right at the end of a pile of grain. So Ruth is looking for stability. She needs stability. He lies down at the foot of stability. Are you getting this? Notice where he lies down. Notice where he lies down. The problem is we evaluate people on such superficial levels. And you've got to watch where a person lies down. You've got to watch what a person builds their life on. You, you've got to watch what, what's really at the core of a person. And you've got to take notice of that. Because beneath the veneer, you know, this, 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 this layer that we try to put on the airs and the mask that we wear to make people feel good. Beneath all of that is the real essence of who that person is. And one of the things that you've got to make sure is that you all agree on those fundamental things. I'm not talking about, you know, do you like me? Check yes and maybe or whatever. Or, you know, uh, we hooked up on Zooks or Match.com or whatever and somebody hooked us up. No. Well, what about some of the fundamental basic things? If you are a family-oriented person, then why are you even wasting your time with an individual that doesn't share the same fundamental value? Notice where he lays down. And so many of us sacrifice the stuff that matters the most because we're just trying to get along and just trying to make it work. It's kind of like it's kind of like the foundation of a home. Um, how many of you have ever seen HGTV? 
Okay. My wife, my wife loves HGTV. And, uh, you know, because I love my wife, uh, um, you know, because I love her, you, you know, I mean, I love her. And so, you know, I love HGTV, you know, just a little bit, you know. Um, but, 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 but we watch all of this stuff at the house and uh, homes on homes and uh, divine design or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and I love it. You know, Selling New York is one of my favorite shows. And, 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 and when people go and they look at houses, you know, have you ever noticed they have this wish list? You know, uh, you know we, want, we, want, uh, we want granite countertops, you know. We got to have, we gotta have uh, uh, stainless steel appliances. That's a, that's a, that's a deal breaker. Oh, you know, uh, I forgot the show where they go to three different houses. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, house hunters. There you go. There you go. There you go. And well, you know, I didn't like this one because, you know, our list, our wish list, you know, we need granite countertops. You know, we need a pool in the backyard. You know, we want ceiling fans in every room, so forth and so on. Have you noticed that, that, that nobody says my wish list, I want a good foundation. No, notice nobody says, y you know, you know what I really want? I want to make sure on my wish list that this house is, is, is built upon the right foundation, that the foundation has been poured the right way. Everybody talks about granite countertops and stainless steel appliances and big master bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. But if the foundation is not poured correctly, amen, it doesn't matter how big the pool is, it doesn't matter how big the acreage is, if the foundation is not poured correctly, the house is going to tumble. And the issue when we start evaluating people that we do life with is we approach them the same way we approach buying the house. We focus on stainless steel appliances, we focus on granite countertops, all of that secondary stuff, when what you really need to be focusing on is what is the foundation of this house like? Is there a crack in the foundation? What are your values? Do you share a love for the Lord? Do you, do you share an honest commitment to family? Do you share a passion for integrity? Do you have a commitment to truth? Those are foundational things. Notice where they lie down. Where do they build their life? Because y'all got to agree on the right things. What political party doesn't really make a difference. Where they grew up doesn't make a difference. This is the stuff that makes a difference. Number seven, they demonstrate honor and submission. They demonstrate honor and submission. Go back to chapter two and look at verse number 10. When she finally meets Boaz, it says, at this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She bowed down with her face to the ground. Look at chapter 3 and look at verse number 7. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was in good spirits. He went to lie down. She approached him quietly, uncovered his feet, and laid right there. Where did she lay? At his feet. So she bows her head when she meets him, which is the sign of honor. The Bible says that you are supposed to esteem others higher than yourself. But here's what we normally do. We normally emasculate, put other folk down. Uh, emasculate, I think y'all missed that, ladies. That's when, that's when you literally just, just take them. I've known, I've been, you know, I've kind of, I got, I've, if you're new to the worship center, I don't want to scare you because I can be shocking. Um, but all of the kids should be in bed. Amen. But, but instead of esteeming and honoring, we have a tendency to want to emasculate and put in the individuals down. But you have got to, if you want a Boaz, if you want your Ruth, you have to honor them. Well, I mean, I could do bad all by myself. Honor them. Does that individual in your life, do they even know that you care and honor and respect them? I'll never forget, this was, there was a couple that I was ministering to, and this is the, a good example of honoring, and I love to tell this story because I think so many people can identify with it. They got married, and she made a little bit more money than the guy did. She finished school before he did. He went on to graduate school and all that kind of stuff. And so when they got married, she was paying for the apartment. She was paying the mortgage.